England wrestling with its own identity. Has the football team found its identity under Gareth Southgate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nobody in the England team does the Prime Minister a massive favour, but not, the, not at the moment. The way they're playing, this can, you know, couldn't be more contrary. But it's, I love what he's doing. You know, he seems to have identified with the young players. They seem to enjoy playing for England again because it has been a struggle. And I think, Gareth, we... Uh, Gary and I played many years ago and there were times I used to look at the England team and think, do the players really want to come? Do they want to go and play for England? Can they handle the pressure that it brings? But these players look like they really enjoy it. For some of them, it looks more, of a, more entertaining than playing for their clubs because they're playing in the team, sometimes when they're in and out of their, uh, their domestic game. So, no, I've been so impressed with him. And that interview just sums him up. You know, I, I played with Gary Euro 96. He's a very calm customer, doesn't get phased a lot. And I think the fact that he struggled as a manager has probably helped him. The fact that he had the struggles at Middlesbrough, but now he looks like a guy that's so comfortable in his own skin. Do you know what I have to say? I do think St George's Park has really helped because it's given England a base, an identity, where you can help create that atmosphere. Where before it was meeting up and going to different training grounds, different hotels. And so after training at St George's Park, you can spend that time connecting as players and as people. So I really do think that base has helped the England team. I went there on, on Wednesday and I was actually um, part of the transition. So when we went from uh, the Grove to St George's Park, it was unpopular. It was unpopular with the players, it was unpopular with the staff. The Grove was a great place to be. Um, it's got the coffee shops, it's got the golf course, it's near to Wembley. And St George's Park is a little bit of a lily shawl feel to it. It's out in the countryside, it's a bit of a pain to get to. And I went on Wednesday and the interesting thing was they've actually stopped now external parties coming in St George's Park during England being there. So now it's purely just England teams in there. Also, the younger players that are now in the squad, it's all they've ever known. They've never been to the Grove or other hotels before. Yeah. So what you've now got is a transition from players who used to being at sort of what would be London hotels, who liked it, to players who now in the under 17s, 16s, 18s, 21s, always been at St George's Park. They were always there. They're now coming in, and it does now feel like the vision that was actually wanted in the first place, but it needed that transition away from, obviously, the players and people who'd been used to being away from there. But in terms of Gareth, you've had a close look at the job. For a couple of years, you, you've seen the complexities, the, the challenges that the England manager mm. faces. What do you think he's got right? Um, the big thing that I think that he has for me, he mentioned there, he thinks of himself as England as being the biggest thing. So when we were playing, say, mid 2000s, you know, for Liverpool, for Manchester United, for Arsenal, the Champions League, the, the fight for your club always seemed to be the most important. Whereas I think with Gareth, England was always the most important thing for him, probably because he played for what would be clubs that weren't in Champions League football. I think what he's done, he's removed the barrier for players over the last two years. So the likes of Chilwell now, the likes of Trippier, I know he was at Tottenham, but played at Burnley, Maguire, Pickford, who was at Sunderland, they all feel as though now they can play for England, irrespective of the club they played for. That wasn't the case for many, many years with England. You had to feel like you played for a top four club to be able to get into the England squad. So I think he's removed that barrier. I think that the fact that he's been in the FA for four or five years, he understands it, he understands the politics of it. It's not easy. International football is not actually easy. For a manager to come from club football to international football is not easy. They miss that everyday sort of being. He'd done it for four or five years. So he's done a brilliant job. I think the FA needed it. English football needed it more than ever. English football has taken a batter in over 20 years. I was actually told a statistic earlier on in the week that I think we're the lowest percentage of England players in the Premier League now at 29% it's ever been. So players are continuing to dwindle and get less opportunity in first teams in the Premier League. English coaches have struggled. We don't have any, I don't think there's been an English coach at top four club probably for five, six years. They don't even get linked with the top clubs in English for, in the Premier League. So we've taken a batter in for 20 years. It needed it last summer. I think the idea of Sancho going to the Dortmund is a big thing as well. The idea that we can actually show that young players can compete, not just in youth tournaments, but actually in the best leagues, in the best teams. So there is a change happening at the moment, and Gareth's been at the forefront of that. I think you're right as well, but even people like Eddie Howe, you know, now we start to realise the managers are out there. A bit like I've said for a while, we've got good talent here. We've also got managers that know the game. But because of the perception of so many foreign managers coming to the Premier League, we, we tend to look down our noses at them. But look at the job that Eddie Howe's done. You know, another player midweek playing for, for his club, you know, play, playing for his country that you never thought a few years ago had the ability to do it. So it shows you we have got the managers and Gareth, to a certain extent, is a trailblazer. And then do you actually think as well, because when you look at this England team now, Gareth's emphasis on that it is the team. Yeah. We need everyone, the squad as well, bringing in, what, since he's been in charge, 56 players he's brought in, different, he's willing 
willing to experiment, but it's all about the team, not one individual. Mm. That, that was the one thing that surprised me about Wayne Rooney returning on Thursday, that he's worked so hard to remove that sort of what would be celebrity idea of the England squad, that no one's bigger than the other. In, in going to previous tournaments, there was always we relied upon one star player. He actually seems to have removed that over the last couple of years, and I was happy that he obviously did allow the Wayne Rooney thing to happen on Thursday, but it did surprise me. That was the one thing that did surprise me. He's fought to remove that idea of an individual standing out above the rest. And the squad as well. You used to be able to name the squad. You look at it, if it was a pointless even looking, you was the same squad every time. With Gareth, it's different. He picks players that you don't expect to be there, just to test them, to find out if they can do it. Because there's been many... And that maybe comes... Look, you know, Gary touched on it there. The fact that he played at Villa, the fact that he played at Middlesbrough, and he perhaps didn't see himself as one of the top players as, as, as such, he knows what it's like and the talent that, they, that we do possess that perhaps just need the opportunity to play. I, I think it's an interesting point that, that Jamie makes. It's a real difficult balance, that. So you, you've got your squad that you've picked the previous month, let's say in June, for the summer friendlies. You're then picking a team in August, you're then picking a team in September and November. You want consistency and con continuity, so players build a relationship, so you've got the same players there. But one player could be in form in September, not in the team in November. So you've got that balance between, well, he did really well for me last mm. month, but he's not played for the last three weeks because he's not played at his club. But you want to reward him for what he did for you last month, but he's not played for three weeks. We would, fair when we were there, would angle towards the one who'd done well for us the previous month, maybe, because you built up that confidence and trust. Whereas I think Gareth ends up... Uh, Gareth has actually adopted the approach completely the opposite. If you played for me last month, but you've not played in the last two or three weeks for your club, I'll actually play someone who's played. And it's a difficult balance, that, sometimes, between trying to build a sort of consistency and a sort of a... Uh, a relationship with players who are doing well for you and then have it actually being clinical enough to say, well, actually, you've not played for two weeks, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having it's you out. It's that healthy competition for yeah. places. Because I suppose when you look at um, left-back, that when you look at Thursday night, we're thinking Ben Chilwell's playing, so actually he's not going to yeah. be starting today. But then actually when you look at it, he played well in his debut when he started um, against Croatia that game when he started. Spain, he done well. So actually he deserves to keep the, sh um, yeah. the shirt today. And Fabian Delph. Yeah. You probably yeah. wouldn't have expected him to play today, but... Mm. Must have impressed him yeah. on Thursday night. Absolutely. That's what I think. But being able to bring players in like that, that can adapt. Maybe he's looking at the Croatian midfield and actually, well, OK, I need this sort of player. I know with Delft, I can give you this job and you can implement it for me. Well, Modric plays on that right side of the three in midfield and Delft is quick to the ball. He's a good tackler. He can tackle well. You know, he's played at left back as well, obviously, in the last 12 months. So, but he does go and actually does close down Fabian Delph. He actually takes the ball off you. So, Robert Modric, you know, he's adapted obviously to play Delph in that position. He would normally go with more of a footballer there.